a little bit about myself. I'm very direct. And sometimes when you are like that, you don't get the response that you should be getting because I'm not being aggressive or anything. I'm just being very direct and blunt. The communication part is very hard sometimes. Trying to get your points across, and especially like when you're perceived as being violent, which I'm not, never have been. And then like the people, they talk to you in a different manner. So you, you don't get the respect that you deserve and you're basically just sort of like put into a category, which you're not. Oh, he's waiting on the help. Which is the hardest part about it. And then getting turned away or getting told you're beyond help. Which I've, I've been told in the past I'm beyond help. <laughs> That's where I get that from, so it's like, I'm beyond help, all right, fair enough, I'm out, well, let's go, goodbye. <laughs> so it's like, you're telling them everything you're experiencing, everything you've gone through, everything you're going through, and then to be told by, like, I think it was a mental health team in the hospital, you're beyond help. It's like, how can you book someone beyond help from, like, a domestic violence situation? Fair enough, the domestic violence people, they come out and speak to you and, like, comfort you. But where you've got nurses and all other ones who don't understand what you've been through and just being horrible about the situation, bearing in mind you're already feeling low, it's like, there's no need for it. It just makes you don't want to be there, which that's what I did, it come out of there. And I was 19, I had a few years of becoming really unwell. Uh, I was sectioned at my home by two on-call GPs, went into acute services. I was smoking cannabis around from being 17 to 19. I was still smoking it. I just saw the cannabis, put me down as a drug and juice psychosis and kicked me out the door, basically. And I think there's the lack of support and communication and understanding to help someone is just not there. It's just so disappointing. For me, the when the waiting lists are high and they're calling you on with our numbers, again, for a domestic violence um, victim, I like to say thriver, survivor, thriver, um, we get told not to answer with L because the perpetrator always used to ring, ring us on with L. So for me, that needs looking at. And if you don't answer the call, then you've got to wait another six months or a year to get that service. And I think that's just not understanding your own mental health. I don't trust services because years ago, if you'd asked me this question, I would have said 100%. Now, today, what I've seen in the systems of people you're supposed to trust, no. I would not say I'd trust it at all. One of the biggest obstacles um, is that there's a couple of things on there. The first thing I ever got arrested for was arson. Um, I was 10 years old um, and that stopped me from getting into buildings, supported housing for many years into my adulthood. Um, and you can't even explain the backstory. It's just, it's on your criminal record. It, it stopped me being able to get into somewhere to live. So it's kept me homeless on more than one occasion. Myself, I like to work with one person, like speak with a person all the time because they, they know about you. They know your issues and that. Whereas, like, when you're phoning these organizations, they put you onto a different person every single time. So you're going through the same thing, but, like, just nothing happening, as in, like, the previous times. Just work with it, like, from, from to do something better, it's basically, like, working with people, understanding the problems and not just reading stuff of a book and telling people, well, this is up, this is up. It's more to do with getting to know the person working with the person, getting them to open up to you so you know what the full ins and outs, and then look for support in helping them. Not just straight think like, you know, what's happening when like you don't know the circumstances they're in. So it's like you need to work with people and understand them before getting to know them. With my mental health being taken seriously early on and actually being diagnosed correctly, I wouldn't have been nearly 41 now, only just sorting my life out. I'd have been sorting my life out in the 20s, if not in my late teens. I could have had a life. 
I could have settled down, had, had a family, got a nice job. Not being open and honest about stuff. So, yeah, for me, the trust is a big one. Being friendly, being empathy, being compassion, being understanding, listening to that person, really listening to that person. All of the different services work better together as a team. If you look at people that are suffering from multiple disadvantages, they've gone through lots of different services. So if all the systems worked together and a bit more individual, surely that would run more better. And if you could try somehow to f look at the person, be much less judgmental, and not assume that you know them. Assume that you don't know them and assume that the fact that they're there with you, that they want to do something for themselves. 